What's up, Adventure Family? I know that you guys haven't seen me a lot lately. Or Max, one of the cats, but there's Max. And I wasn't even sure I was going to get back into kayak fishing. I just got so bummed out. I go, you know, I, I've been labeled manic depressant and borderline schizophrenic. Believe it or not. I think you probably do, though. You probably do believe that part because that's true. And I went through a depression stage again, and, you know, nothing nothing was getting me out of it. But that's all behind us. Like Fireball. Now, have you guys seen Fireball lately? He's down here, too. But I, w I want to get back into kayak fishing, and I really didn't want to spend another $4,500 on a kayak. It just didn't make sense to me. I just bought a $3,000 bike, a $1,500 bow to hunt with. Right there. Um, I just didn't think, you know, spending $4,500 on another kayak was something I wanted to do. And I really wasn't sure I was going to get a kayak. But I start researching some budget kayaks. Fireball just left. I start researching some budget kayaks. And I came across one. And I went to No Bad Days Kayaks in Pflugerville, Texas. They took really good care of me the last time I went there. Because about six months ago, I bought the PA-14 from them. And once again, they took care of me. And it's kind of ironic that when I went in to get a kayak six months ago, they had a PA-14 set up for display. And that's the one I bought. And yesterday... I went there and they had this kayak on display and that's the one I bought. Carson, thank you for taking care of me. Forrest, you guys are awesome down there at No Bad Days Kayak. But I bought a budget kayak. Um, it's huge. It's almost the same size as PA-14. And I went with a propeller drive. You can buy this kayak one of two ways. You can get it with a propeller drive or you can get it with um the fin drive and i went with the propeller drive and the reason i went with the propeller drive is because you guys know if you've been keeping up my last couple years of kayak fishing have been out of hobies pa 14s outbacks and of course my links i had for quite a while and I, I i love the links i would still have the links if it had storage that's the one thing the links didn't have that i wish it did but anyway this budget kayak is about the same size as the Hobie PA-14. Um, it has storage and $1,650 is the price of this kayak. Now, to some, that might not be budget. But when we're talking a, a kayak that's the size of a PA-14 that you can pedal, that has a lot of features it comes with, that's a budget kayak. So without further ado, let's just stop my rambling and let's go and do a quick walkthrough of the kayak I've just purchased. And tomorrow is going to be the first day I get to take it out in the water. So we'll see how the kayak performs on the water tomorrow. Let's go. All right, so I'm going to give you a quick rundown bow to stern on the Hammerhead a Whale Shark Kayak. This is a budget-friendly pedal kayak and i do say budget friendly it's almost the same specs as the hobie pa14 it's 13 feet long it's 37 inches wide so it's a big kayak and when i say budget kayak one thousand six hundred fifty dollars for a pedal kayak and what does it come with let's take a look we have a bungee so you can park your paddle you have a nice size front hatch. Now, inside the front hatch, there is a very shallow area right here where you can put stuff. So I guess it won't fall in here and get lost to the bottom. Um, I just got my GoPro stuff right here for the front GoPro. Um, it does have a drain plug here. So I'm thinking about just throwing a couple of those, you know, plastic ice packs in here. Um, throw a drink or two, but you can put whatever you want up, up front. You do have the pedal drive system. Unpedalable right now just because it's hitting right there. Um, so the pedals are all the way around. 
but it does come with the pedal drive system. You also have the option of buying the fin drive. You would just unbolt these four bolts right here. This whole assembly would come out. You put an assembly that would fit a fin drive. But I've been, I've been using the Hobie PA14s for the last couple years, and I really wanted instant reverse. And I know what you're going to say. The Hobie PA14 180 turbo kickoff fins had reverse. It does. It's not instant, and it's not very intuitive. Don't tell me it is. I've, I've had them for years. You got to reach down. You got to pull the cable. Sometimes the cable doesn't pro pull correctly. Maybe one fin spins backwards and the other one doesn't. That's not intuitive. And you got to have the pedals at the right spot. You can't be pedaling and pull it. You got to have them straight across each other and then pull it. You can't be pedaling. You can't have one pedal forward, one pedal backwards and pull it. So that's not very intuitive. I want it instant reverse. I, I've missed it. So instant reverse. You got some soft deck pad right here. These are just rod leashes. I put some rod leashes up front. Um, of course, this comes off. This does bolt up, but and it bungees, bungees in place. But once again, I can't store it because of that. You have a nice hatch right here. I honestly think this hatch is just as good as the Hobie hatch. Um, it feels very solid and it comes already that's the kayak right there. there. There's no cutout right here. So if water got in, it would fill it up with water. But it's got a seal. And it feels every bit as good as my Hobie, my Hobie um, center hatch. And you don't have to buy the bucket. And another thing that really surprised me is the rigidity of this budget kayak. I've had my Hobies for years. And there was a lot of flex. You could get quite a bit of flex. And this has a lot less flex. I mean, honestly, I was the first thing I was scared of is how much flex this might have. It's got almost none. It's very freaking solid. And of course, I'm not standing in it. But with the whole BPA 14, take my word, you go up there and you feel a lot more flex. I think it's because you have a lot more deck space in the whole BPA 14. This is 37 inches wide. The whole BPA 14 is 38 inches wide. But the big difference is. The whole BPA 14, the gunnel's about this wide the whole way. So you lose, you lose this much of the gunnel and it just more space opened up. It's got very thin gunnels. Um, but moving on, I, it does have gear tracks on it. They are aluminum. It's got big molded in handles. I like that. Cause you can actually use them for tying them down to in a molded in handle up front. Now the thing I didn't like, but we'll see if I like it or if I get over it, is the way the front looks. Really wasn't too stoked about that. Um, I did put on some Gorilla Tape right here. That's my doing. You got traction pad here. And of course, you got your adjustable seat. You got a nice spot here where you can fit some tackle trays. Pull one out to kind of give you an idea. Actually fits there quite nice. You got a huge, huge rear tank well. Now there's no spots for any power poles or anything like that. You have four rod holders in the back. You got two here and two here. And you got two in the front. One here and one here. It does come with a paddle. Got paddles, but it comes with a paddle. Two more flush mount rod holders. Of course, you got steering on the left side only, but that's all right. That's the only side I ever used when I was, store, was steering my kayak. You got a rudder system that is just like the rudder system on the native 
Propel 13 I had. Exactly the same with one difference. And I did hear that, and I've seen that the Boondocks rudder will also fit on this, give you a little bit longer of a rudder. Um, yeah, that's just more Gorilla tape I put down there. There is no sacrificial, no sacrificial skid plates, so I put a little bit of Gorilla tape down there. But what's cool about this rear rudder is you got this pin right here. You pull it out, and you have a little skeg built into the rudder itself, and that skeg um, is spring-loaded. If you hit something, the skeg just goes right back up. But that's going to give you a little bit better turning radius than just this rudder right here. And that's pretty cool. And of course, all you got to do is put that back up, put the pin back in. And you're good to go again. As I said, same rudder setup as the Titan Propel I had. Um, you got some in-hole access right here. It is sealed. You also have in-hole access right here. You have a bunch of scubber holes, and they did come with uh, the scubber plugs. And you have one right here that would go to your under hole transducer. Yes, this also has a transducer spot under the hole. Now let's take a look at the bottom of the hole. It is a catamaran style hole. Nice and wide, you can see right there is where the transducer would go. I haven't had it on the water yet. I just got it yesterday and I bought it from No Bad Days Kayak in Pflugerville, Texas. And man, let me tell you, if you're in the Austin area, No Bad Days Kayak is probably one of the best kayak stores I've ever had to deal with. Super friendly, super knowledgeable, and they are there helping you out. I mean, they're every step of the way. He's like, let me help you do this, let me help you do that, let me help you load it. I mean, super friendly staff, man. So hats off to you. I'm not even wearing a hat, but hats off to you. No bad days kayak. And as I said, it's a budget kayak. So yeah, I've had a whole lot of PA 14s. I've had four of them in the last three years. I've had the Outbacks. Um, you know, I've had the Lynx. I love the Lynx too. Um, I just didn't like the fact that the Lynx had zero storage. So this and this are going to come in a lot handier. And I, I don't think, man, I just didn't think I really need to spend another $4,500 on another kayak. It just didn't make sense to me. I want to see if for $1,600, if I can have just as much fun out in the water. Some may laugh. It's a Chinese knockoff kayak. But you know what? $1,600 is a lot, lot easier on the pocketbook than another $4,500 for a OBPA 14. Now, tomorrow is going to be the first day I get it out in the water. So, we're going to see how well it handles in the water. So, stay tuned. All right, Adventure Family. And as always, thank you for watching. Just to let you know, I have a lot of really cool things planned coming up. Um, my mind's back into it. I'm hopefully, you know, I stay in a good place. Um, you know, hopefully YouTube doesn't smack me around anymore. They demonetize the channel. So I need y'all's help. We'll start watching some of these videos. Let's get this channel monetized again. Um, anyway, I love y'all, Venture Family. Y'all have an amazing day. Thank you for watching.